If you and I know the way, why aren't we guiding people the way, the truth, and the way that they can have life and have it in abundance? Are we attracted to Jesus because of what and who He is? Accomplished to draw man back into ourselves, to draw them out of the hands of the enemy, to bring them back to your glory. Is there any other way? Good evening. How's everybody doing? Everybody's all bundled up. Me too. That's cold. I'm going to start with a reading of Psalms 100, and it is the Psalms of Thanksgiving. And it says, Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands, and serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and unto his course with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you for each and every person here, Lord. I thank you for your powerful healing hand heavenly father upon those who are ill heavenly father and those who are still out ill heavenly father we come in agreement right now in the name of your son yeshua hamashiach and we pray a perfect perfect healing upon their body their soul and their mind heavenly father the enemy has nothing on us lord we're your children and we still believe in the healing power of the blood of jesus christ and we thank you heavenly father I thank you as I get into the message, Heavenly Father, that the Holy Spirit will lead and direct my lips and my words, Heavenly Father. I surrender myself to you, Lord. And I thank you for the honor and the privilege of bringing forth your word. We bless your holy name, for you truly are worthy of it all. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 So today we're going to be talking about Thanksgiving. Amen. So who's going to go home and throw a turkey in a crock pot or in an oven or a roaster? Or, well, my mother-in-law already washed her. She's got it all ready. He said, Pastor's going to go catch his. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Thank you. So today, as we talk about Thanksgiving, I'm going to make it short. Um... After service, I have some little pamphlets that I want. I'm going to have all of you guys come up, and I'm going to give you a pamphlet. And it says, A Prayer for Thanksgiving. I'm going to pray it over you guys, but I also want you to take one because I know that tomorrow's the day where somebody's going to drop by, and you know, or you're going to go somewhere. And keep this with you and share it with somebody. Share it with somebody. It's so important for us to, to share the true meaning of Thanksgiving. It's not just about turkey and mashed potatoes and pumpkin pie and football. It's about really honoring the Lord with a grateful heart. Amen? So, so I'm going to read. I am going to read from Luke 17 verses 11 through 19. And I'm reading from the New King James. So if you want to follow along, it is Luke 17, verses 11 through 19. And this is the story of the 10 lepers. Everybody there? Amen. 17. Luke 17. 11 through 19. So now it happened as he went, meaning Jesus. So now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of, the, of Samaria and Galilee. And then he entered a certain village and there met him 10 men who were lepers who stood afar off. 
And they lifted their voices and said, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priest. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he returned, and with a loud voice he glorified God. And he fell down at his feet. At it, he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. You know, Jesus was just going about his business. And actually, as, as he was going to Jerusalem, this was actually going to be a little before his crucifixion. So even on the way to crucifixion, can you imagine somebody on death row and still ministering to other prisoners in the jail? But he, he knew he was going to Jerusalem and that the crucifixion would be soon. But yet he still stopped along the way to help people. So he was just passing through, and as he entered a certain village, there was men who stood afar off. And they stood afar off because they had leprosy. And in those days when somebody had leprosy, they had to shout from afar off, unclean, unclean, so nobody would come close to them. Can you imagine living a life apart from your family, from your children, from your home, from your neighbors, because you were unclean? You couldn't be among society. You couldn't go back with your family unless you were healed. So they not only had leprosy, but I'm sure they also felt lonely and rejected. And even though there was 10 of them together, because these 10 had leprosy and they were kind of, you know, in their little group and watching off for each other and hanging out and stuff. They were still lonely, I'm sure, for their family, for their wives, for their children. But on top of that, having to have the embarrassment of saying, unclean, unclean, whenever somebody would pass by so they wouldn't get close to you. Can you imagine us before we came to Jesus and we were living in our filthy sin and we had to wear a, a shirt or proclaim, unclean, I'm a sinner. Don't have nothing to do with me. Don't associate with me. I'm clean. I'm, I'm in sin. These are my sins. See, their leprosy showed on the outside. What if our sins showed on the outside? How quickly would we be to cast away those sins from us? if they were actually written on our body by the leprosy of sin. So as they lifted up to their voices to Jesus, they cried out, Master, Master. See, I'm sure that even though they weren't able to congregate or go into the temple or, or go and watch Jesus do his miracles, they had heard about him. They had heard about him. There's this rabbi. He heals. He raises the dead. He even forgives. Who is such a man who can forgive the sins of people? Who is such a man but God can only forgive? I'm sure they heard the rumors. Who does he think he is? And the rumors and the gossip was getting stronger and stronger as he was on his way to Jerusalem. Because the same people that he fed, the same people that he cleansed, the same people that he healed, and the same people that raised him from the dead. And when he was coming into Jerusalem on a donkey, they threw their clothes and, and the palm branches, and then they glorified him. Hallelujah. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And very, very shortly after, they, they shouted out, Hosanna. 
Hosanna in the highest. They found themselves shouting, crucify him. Crucify him. Because the leaders of that day claimed him to be unclean and claimed him to be a blasphemer. Because who can heal but God? So they shouted, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. This should say mercies, because every day we need his mercies. Every day. His mercies are renewed every day. So when he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priest. See, and so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. But why did Jesus tell them, go and show yourself to the priest? Everybody says, okay, well, you know, since Jesus wasn't under the law, and, and, and see, the thing is, some, it might surprise you, Jesus wasn't a Christian. We're Christians because we take on his first name, Christ. We are Christians. He is, was, and always will be the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Always. Nothing or no one can take that name from him. And even those who don't believe it, one day, whether they want to or not, on their way to hell, they will bow down and confess that he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Amen. But if you study this, why Jesus told them to go and show yourself to the priest. This is, you can find that in Leviticus 14. I'm not going to go there. Leviticus 14, 1 through 20, in case you want to reference back to that later on. This is where, where um, it is the law given to Moses for anyone with leprosy to go and show himself to a priest when he is healed. That way the priest can examine him and give a blood offering for him, and he would put blood on their ears, on their fingers, on their toes, and then he would examine them. See, the thing is, with the blood, it was holy because it was a sacrifice for sins. If they were not truly cleansed by just putting the blood on their ears and their fingers and their toes, they would drop dead. But as he did this ritual, and they stood then he proclaimed them cleansed and he would give them a certificate saying you are cleansed. You are cleansed. See, we get that certificate also from Jesus because the Bible says that when a sinner comes to repentance and with all of your heart, you give your heart and your life to Jesus Christ, the angels in heaven write your name in the book of life. That is your certificate that you are cleansed. But one, one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God. He wasn't even a Jew. He was a Samaritan. He was a Gentile. But he recognized, he recognized the power and authority that Jesus Christ had because who did this? Who cleansed the leper? And he recognized it, that he was healed, and he returned with a loud voice glorifying God. And then he fell down on his face. And this is what you do when you stand before a holy God. Right here that it says, and then he fell down on his face. What did John in the book of Revelation do when he stood before Jesus? He didn't say, hey, bro, it's good to see you again. He fell on his face because he recognized the power, the authority, and the holiness of a mighty God. So he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, were there not ten who were cleansed? Can you imagine just his voice breaking up? Wasn't there ten? 
Didn't I just heal 10? Where are the other nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? How many times, sometimes, as believers and followers of Jesus Christ, do we forget to give thanks? Count the first hour of your morning. Count it. Count the first hour. Especially now in this cold. You can get up in the morning and say, thank you, God, that I slept in a warm bed last night with a roof over my head. Thank you that I get up and I just touch a switch and the light goes on. Thank you that I touch another switch and the heater goes on. Thank you that I have hot water to shower. And thank you, Jesus, for toothpaste and toilet paper. If it wasn't for toothpaste, I don't think any of us would have friends. <laughs> and then we thank God for breakfast. Thank God for your cup of coffee. Thank God that you have clothes. Thank God that you have shoes on your feet. Thank God you have more blessings the first hour of your morning getting ready than most people have the rest of their lives. We forget it. The other night the pastor worked graveyard. It was so cold. You know, I put, put the heater on 55 or 60 just in case it gets really cold. The heater kicks on. And, you know, I have my little puppy, Precious, and she's like in a little ball next to me. Like, we're trying to keep each other warm. And I just started crying. I said, God, all the people who are sleeping outside right now, I'm cold in here. I literally wanted to put all my blankets and jackets in the car and drive down Central and see who was freezing out there. See, we forget how lucky, how blessed we are. We forget it. Not everybody has what we have. And Jesus said to him, the one who came back to give thanks, he said, arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. In the Greek, this means your faith has saved you. Nine lepers got healed, but only one got saved that day because he returned to give thanks to God. Sometimes we want healing, physical healing, spiritual healing, emotional healing. But how many times do we thank God instead of, God, why don't you take this from me? God, I'm tired of being sick. I'm tired of having this. I'm tired of having this. Instead of saying, thank you, God, that I'm still breathing and I can still glorify you this day. How many times do we do that? I find myself complaining sometimes too. I get up in the morning and I remember one morning I got up and I'm like, oh, gosh, my feet hurt again. And the Holy Spirit told me, but you have feet. You have feet. How many people are born without feet? How many people, because of diabetes or whatever condition, they have to have their feet amputated? So nine were healed, but only one was saved that day. And if you go back and research Hear what Jesus said, your faith has made you well. Go back and research it in Greek. It means your faith has saved you. He was made whole. I don't know if any of you guys have ever researched leprosy. But it eats at the flesh. All of a sudden you're just walking one day and an ear falls off because it just rots off. You can go and look at some pictures some of them, their nose just falls off. Their flesh starts rotting like it would rot in the grave, and pieces just start falling off, toes, fingers, your nose, pieces of their face, flesh would just fall off. And though the others were healed, this man was made whole. I truly believe that he was made so whole that every finger, everything that, that he had lost grew back, and he was made totally and completely whole. And I can only imagine the testimony that this man had 
and that he went around proclaiming his healing and the one who healed him. You know, I'm so proud of Alicia. She's going to be up here on Sunday giving her testimony. I know you did. He, he does that all the time, Alicia. A testimony can be such a powerful thing. We all go through things in life. We all go through pains. We all go through hurts. But the thing is, is when you accept Jesus Christ, you have to claim yourself healed. If you still walk around with that, oh, man, I'm ill, I'm, I'm this, I'm that, and, and, and it, it's always going to be with you. Because if you open a door to a demon, he will never leave you, even though he cannot physically be inside of you because you believe in Jesus Christ and you've accepted Jesus Christ. But you know what? He can hold on to you the rest of your life. Because you still claim the old things. Like, I'm never going to break this addiction of smoking. Then you never are. I'm never going to break this addiction of whatever. You never will. Because you're allowing that familiar spirit to still be there. I really prayed today before service, and I really asked the Holy Spirit to keep me focused to keep me focused on this message of thanksgiving because I have so much burning in my heart that I want to bring out. There's so much going on in the world today that I want to bring out, but it's going to be a message for another day. So this year, as we gather to celebrate Thanksgiving, let's remember to celebrate the greatest gift of all, salvation through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's the greatest gift. Not the turkey, not the ham, not the mashed potatoes, as wonderful as it all is. And by the way, tomorrow nothing has calories. So pour on that whipped cream. You know, when pastor gets his piece of pumpkin pie, I'm like, where's the pumpkin pie? You just see a big old pile of cool whip, you know? It's like, okay, it's down there somewhere. <laughs> You like to get people on the spot, baby, so. So I'm going to read a few scriptures here. There's 40 scriptures in the New King James that talks about Thanksgiving. But I chose a few of them that I'm going to read to you guys. And, and you can go back and listen to this later if you want to take notes now or you can take notes. But it is so important to give thanks to God. You know, if you're not constantly... If you're not constantly purposing, because see, our heart is evil above all things. And if you're not constantly purposing to discipline your heart, to be a heart of gratefulness and thanksgiving, the enemy can sneak in. Let me tell you something. My husband is my witness. I hate bugs. In my house in the summer, even the flies are afraid to come inside because they already know, man, it's a vengeance. Flies, mosquitoes. The dare I see a roach or anything, but as we were gone on vacation, a little field mouse decided to come into our house. I well, asked my husband. There was furniture flying all over, pots, pans. I took everything out of the cabinets. I vacuumed everything. I cleaned everything with bleach. I put, I put, um, I put him some food so he can eat. And then the next day, I found him dead by the washing machine. Because I'm not going to allow anything into my house that doesn't have to be there. And I didn't give him permission to be there. And I'm not going to give the enemy permission to be there. But see, he snuck in while we were on vacation. And sometimes we take a little mental vacation. And then the enemy sneaks in. And we think it's just a little sin. It's just a little sin. It's just taking a few pens from work. Or, you know, I, 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 need, I need a box of paper clips. And I don't want to stop at Walmart. Because, you know, Walmart will be in line for two hours. And by one little sin, we can let the enemy into our house. And man, vengeance on that poor little mouse, I'll tell you. My husband was like, babe, what are you doing? I was tossing pans and plates and moving the fridge and moving the oven. And I mean, literally scrubbing everything down. And the next morning, I woke up and that little mouse was just like a sleepy, sleepy by the washing machine, you know. And I'm like, okay, just got the shop back. <laughs> You know, 
The demons are looking through the kitchen window saying, you know what, we don't want to go in there. But the word of God, the word of God is like that poison that I put out for that mice because I'm not going to share my kitchen with mice. Sorry, I don't care how little and cute they look. Mm -mm. But the word of God is like that poison that keeps the enemies away. They see you surrounded. There's this beautiful shield of light around you when you're constantly saturating yourself with the word of God. And the enemies are looking at the window saying, ooh, no, no. there's that power of the Holy Spirit. Let's move on to the next house. That's the power of the word of God. We all have that power. In 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 16 through 18, I'm going to go a little bit fast, so if you need me to repeat it, please let me know. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. You give thanks in all circumstances. You give thanks if you have the flu. You give thanks if you have the coronavirus. Why? Because you serve a God who's still on the throne and healing still exists. So you give him thanks. I might be in the situation right now, Lord, but I know my healing is coming. You know, last week, Annette and Scott were really sick. And we were texting, and I'm like, do you need anything? You know, we're okay. We have medicine. We have this, everything. But I was just praying for the power of healing to come down in their home. We have that power. But, but if you're going to lay there, oh, God, you know, I don't know why I'm sick, Lord. Why did you give me this illness? Nothing evil comes from the Lord. The reason all these illnesses exist is because there's sin in the world and because we've gone so far away from the precepts of God. In Psalms 103, verses 1 through 4, it says, Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost be being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. He redeemed your life from a pit. Colossians 2, 6 and 7. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught abounding in it with thanksgiving. We have been given a beautiful, powerful gift. We have to walk in it, in authority and in thanksgiving, knowing whose we are and knowing who dwells inside of us. Isaiah 12, verses 4 through 5, it says, On that day you will say, Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, and make them remember that his name is exalted. Praise the Lord in song, for he has done glorious things. Let, let this be known throughout the whole earth. In James 1.17, it says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father, of heavenly lights who does not change like a shifting shadows isn't that amazing aren't you glad that god doesn't change it's so beautiful that we serve a consistent god that he doesn't get up in the morning and say oh no oh no annette and scott have covid we need to bring a meeting let's figure out what we're going to do about this nothing nothing catches him off guard See, the enemy throws the kitchen sink at you, and God's hand is there to catch it. We don't have anything to fear. 1 Chronicles 16.34 says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his steadfast love endures forever. Hebrews 12.28, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful, and so worship God, 
acceptably and re with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. In Psalms 95, verses 1 through 5, it says, O come, and let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully. See what we were doing earlier in worship? This is just rehearsal for when we're in heaven. The worship that we have here is just rehearsal. Because that's what we're going to do for all eternity. We're going to stand around the throne and worship him. Worship him. And as we go into heaven, the angels are going to tell us like they told John, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah. And we're going to turn around and we're going to see a lamb as though it had been slain. And the accuser of the brethren is going to come and say, ah, oh, but you know what he did? And Jesus is going to say, paid in full. Paid in full. There's going to be absolutely nothing that he can accuse us of because the blood has already paid for it. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord, and let us shout joyfully to the rock of salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is the great God and the great King above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are also his. The sea is his, for he made it and his hands formed the dry land. You know, in the Psalms, it says that God holds the universe in the span of his hands. In the span of his hands, right here. Right here. And we're always telling God how big our problem is. And he's holding the whole universe in the span of his hands. And the scientists say, oh, this planet is this million miles away and this is a million miles away and but God's holding it right here he's got the universe he has us he has everything in his hand nothing faces him absolutely nothing faces him Philippians 4 verses 4 through 7 says rejoice in the Lord always and I will say again rejoice let your gentleness be evident to all the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. When my husband was on life support and they gave him no chance of ever coming out, I was on my knees saying, thank you, God. Thank you, God, that you're going to raise him from that bed and he's going to be a testimony. We're going to shut the mouth of the lion. We're going to shut the mouth of the enemy because you know what? All these doctors and nurses and techs and everybody was telling me there's no hope. There's nothing there. I said, there's one thing there that your machines can monitor and it's called the Holy Spirit. And he has a purpose and a plan for this man's life. And he's going to wake up from this bed. And all of you are going to have to recognize that it's God Almighty. Because when the world says it's impossible, then God shows up. Amen. Psalms 118.24 says, This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. That should be in our mind when we step out of bed every morning. And before you go to bed at night, stick your shoes way under the bed. That way when you get up in the morning, you have to get on your knees before you start complaining about how cold it is or whatever. You get on your knees and you be thankful to God that you have feet and that you have shoes. Colossians 3, 15 through 17. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in the word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. 
whatever you do, you do it with a thankful heart. First Chronicles 29, verse 13. Now therefore, our God, we thank you and we praise your glorious name. Just a few more, guys. Ephesians 5, 18 through 20 says, But be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, and singing and making melody with your hearts to the Lord, always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to our God and Father. And it doesn't mean you have to walk around literally speaking in psalms to one another, you know? Oh, like thee and thou, and oh, you know, not, no. Your people are going to look at you and like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> it just means to have those inside of you in your heart and let them shine through you. Let people see what's different about you. I'm over here scared to death about the pandemic and this and that, and I'm locked in my house, but you're all joyful and you're out there ministering to people and, and you're going to work without fear. Let them see it. You know, I ran into a friend in the middle of the pandemic, and, and it was pretty bad. And she's like, aren't you afraid? Aren't you afraid? I told her, you know what? I would rather die of COVID than to live in the prison that is created for so many people. Amen. Wow. Because Jesus made me free, and I'm free indeed. And I'm not going to live in the prison of COVID, the flu, the government, or anything else, because I am free. I used to be in bondage. I never want to go there again. Psalms 107, verses 1 through 3. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed, that's us, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Hebrews 13, 15 says, through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of our lips that openly profess his name. There's fruit that comes out of our lips. It's going to be good fruit or it's going to be rotten fruit. You choose. But the Bible says that whatever a man soweth, so shall he reap. If you plant rotten fruit, you're going to eat rotten fruit. Be careful the way you speak to one another. Don't disrespect each other with your words. I know sometimes it's hard, and maybe we wake up in the morning and we don't like each other very much. It's like it's kind of hard to like you today, but I still love you, and we still have to show respect, grace, and mercy, the same grace and mercy that God has shown us. Psalm 119, verses 1 through 8. Blessed. Blessed are those whose ways are blameless, who walk according to the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his statutes and seek him with all of their heart and do no wrong before, but do no wrong but follow his ways. You have laid down precepts that are to be fully obeyed. Oh, that my ways were steadfast in obeying your decrees. Then I would not be put to shame when I consider all of your commands. And I will praise you with an upright heart as I learn your righteous laws. I will obey your decrees. Do not utterly forsake me. Mm. Second Corinthians 9.15 Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. It doesn't say gifts, it says gift. Because through the gift of his son, Jesus Christ, we have everything else. We have been adopted into his family. We're joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Everything that belongs to him belongs to us also. I'm going to read you two Thanksgiving proclamations and then I'll begin to close. The first Thanksgiving proclamation was on October 3rd of 1789. And I'll read that to you in a minute. 
This is the proclamation of Thanksgiving 2021 from President Joe Biden. Please pay attention, close attention, because I want you to see the difference. I know he gave a, a proclamation today about three o'clock, but it was almost exactly word for word of the one that he gave last year. And this one I had already printed out. So he puts here, Thanksgiving provides us with a time to reflect on our many blessings. From God, this nation, and each other, we are grateful for these blessings even, and especially during this, these times of challenge. That is what George Washington declared on the day of Thanksgiving for his troops as they marched into the dark winter at Valley Forge. It is why in the midst of the Civil War and proclaiming the Thanksgiving holiday we now celebrate today. Let me remind you again, this is President Joe Biden. Abraham Lincoln urged us to remember our fruitful fields and healthful skies. Just as 400 years ago when the pilgrims were able to celebrate a successful harvest thanks to the generosity and support of the Wam Panoag, today we are to express our gratitude for those who have helped us get through this difficult past year. We are grateful for the farm workers and the frontline workers, many of whom are immigrants and who make sure our food is harvested and shipped and keep our grocery stores stocked and keep our cities and our towns clean and safe. We are grateful for the educators who are welcoming our children back into the classrooms. That's another sermon, I'll just. Helping them make up for the lost learning time, both academically and socially. We are grateful for the parents who have carried their families through this challenging time helping their children navigate through this difficult chapter of our nation's history. We are grateful for our healthcare workers working to vaccinate our nation, the nurses who confront, who comfort the people, and the doctors who provide care and compassion. We are grateful for the researchers and scientists who have developed safe and effective vaccines and treatments allowing us to safely enjoy Thanksgiving this year with family around the table. As always, we are grateful for our troops serving far from home, keeping us safe and defending our values. What values? Why didn't he say our freedoms? For the First Lady and me, Thanksgiving has always been a cherished time to enjoy annual traditions that have evolved into sacred rituals with our children and grandchildren, such as throwing the football, preparing family recipes, lighting candles, and setting the table. For many Americans, this Thanksgiving will be the first time gathering with loved ones in person since the start of the pandemic a time of full tables and full hearts. As we celebrate, we will also be thinking of many families feeling the pain of the empty chair at their Thanksgiving table. You are not alone. Our nation stands with you. Now, therefore, I, Joseph R. Biden, Jr., President of the United States of America, by virtue and authority vested in me by the Constitution and the laws of the United States, I do here proclaim Thursday, November 25th, 2021, as a National Day of Thanksgiving. I encourage the people of the United States of America to join together and give thanks for friends and neighbors and family members and strangers who have supported each other over this past year as a reflection of goodwill and unity. In witness thereof, I have unto here set my hand this 24th day of November in the year of our Lord 2021 and in the independence of the United States of America, the 246th, Joseph R. Biden, Jr. So this is the one that President Biden, the pro proclamation he did last year, and he did 
almost word for word today at 3 o'clock he gave that speech. So this is the very first Thanksgiving proclamation on the 3rd of October, 1789. Thanksgiving proclamation in New York, the 3rd of October, 1789. By the President of the United States of America, a proclamation. Whereas it is the duty of all the nation to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God and to obey his will and to be grateful for his benefits and humbly to implore his protection and his favor. And whereas both houses of Congress have thereby joint committee, committee requested to me to recommend to the people of the United States a day of public thanksgiving and prayer, not football, prayer, to be observed by acknowledging with grateful hearts the many single favors of Almighty God, especially by affording them an opportunity peaceably to establish a form of government for their safety and their happiness. Now, therefore, I do recommend and assign Thursday, the 26th day of November, next to be a devoted by all people of these United States to the service of that great and glorious being who is the benefactor and the author of all that is good, all that was, all that is, and all that ever will be. That we may then all unite in rendering unto God our sincere and humble thanks for his kind care and protection of the people of this country previous to becoming a nation for the single and manifold mercies and for the favorable interposition of his providence which we experience in the course and conclusion of this late war. He's giving thanks to God for helping us win that war. For the great decree of tranquility, union, and plenty, which we have since enjoyed for the peaceable and the rational manner in which we have been enabled to establish constitutions of government for the safety and happiness, and particularly in the national the national one now lately instituted for the civil and religious liberty with which we are blessed. And that means that we have acquiring of the diffusing useful knowledge and in general for all the great and various favors which God has been pleased to confer upon us. And also that we may be united in most humbly offering our prayers and supplications to the great Lord and ruler of the nation and the universe and beseech to him to pardon our national and other transgressions and to enable us all, whether in public or in private stations, to perform our several and relative duties properly and punctually, to render our national government a blessing to all people, by constantly being a government of wise, just, and constitutional laws, discreetly and faithfully executed and obeyed, to protect and to guide all sovereign and nations, especially such as have shown us kindness, and to bless them with a good government of peace and concord, to promote and to, to acknowledge and practice a true religion of virtue, and to the increase of science among them and us, and generally to grant unto all mankind such a decree of temporal prosperity as he alone knows how to do best. Given under my hand at the city of New York on this third day of October in the year of our Lord, 1789, President George Washington. What a difference. What a difference. Here he's proclaiming for the whole nation to give thanks and honor and glory by prayer and supplications to Almighty God. And the government that we have now speaks about giving thanks 
Yes, for the food on our table and for football. Look at how far our nation has fallen, guys. Because you remove the cross of Jesus Christ and, and, and our nation crumbles and it's crumbling. There's no moral standards anymore. I pray for those of you who have young kids that you have to send your kids to public school and they're telling them, what do you want to be today? A cat, a dog, a rooster, a horse, a boy, a girl? What do you want to be? What do you want to be? Because what they're trying to do is erase the image of Almighty God in which we were created. But we have to fight, guys. We have to fight. It's a message for another day, but you know what? We have to fight. Because everything is crumbling under our feet. Because the foundation, the cornerstone of this nation, which is Jesus Christ, has been yanked. Not only of our schools and our courtrooms. It's been yanked out of the White House. It's been yanked out of everywhere. They're trying to pass laws. And here very soon, if you see in the news, it already happened today in Switzerland, in Russia, different places, it's already happened. That if you are a Christian and you proclaim in public to be a Christian, you are considered a terrorist and a threat to the national security of, the, of their nation. And they will imprison you. It's coming here. Don't be fooled. It's coming here. There was bombs last night that were shot towards Israel. Look up what happened just last night, guys. So the minister of Jerusalem, of Israel, if you guys didn't know it, was here today speaking with our president because he knows that Russia and Iran are about to start throwing nuclear bombs. So he came over here to say, President Biden, are you with us? If a nuclear war starts, are you with us or against us? And I pray that he has enough sense to say that we stand with you, Israel. Because if not, I don't know. We might look more burned than the turkey here pretty soon. You know, we, have, we still have freedoms but let's not take him for granted because shortly here they're going to be they're going to be taken away from us how much freedoms do we have now to go into a school and pull our children from there they're putting litter boxes in the bathroom in case our children think they're a cat or a dog please A prayer for Thanksgiving. Lord, as we sit down at the Thanksgiving table once again, we want to thank you for your goodness. Thank you for meeting our needs every day, for food, for shelter, for clothing, and for all the many extras that you provide that we so often take for granted. Thank you for family and friends who make our life complete. Thank you that even when we are miles apart, we are bound by the cords of your love. Thank you that we live in a country where we are still free to worship you and to read the word. Most of all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world. When we turn to him, he flooded the darkness of our souls with the light of his love. Thank you that he not only died for our sins, but that he is alive today and he is at your side and he is interceding. He is hearing our prayers and preparing a home for us in heaven. Thank you that Jesus came into this world 
and he took residence in our lives as a Savior, Lord, and God. Thank you for all that you have given us as Christians, the Holy Spirit who is your presence in our lives, the Bible that is the light unto our feet, and Christian friends who encourage and help us. Thank you that we can face tomorrow with hope because Jesus is living for us. Oh Lord, how truly rich we are. Thank you for all that you mean to us. Psalms 100, 4 and 5. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his mercy is from everlasting and his truth endures for all generations. Heavenly Father, as we close this service and we all go our own separate ways, Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for each and every person here, Lord. I want to pray in advance, Heavenly Father, for every morsel of food that they will eat tomorrow. Lord, let it be healthy and nourishing to their body, sanctified and remove all sickness and disease, Heavenly Father. Lord, I pray that tomorrow will be a blessed time with family and friends, Heavenly Father. But most of all, I pray that the light of Jesus Christ will shine through them. That they will be the living word of God. They will be the Bible that maybe somebody will never pick up. And maybe they'll just decide to come to church because they'll see something different in us. Help us to remember that somebody's always watching us. Even if they don't hear our words, they're always watching us. Help us to represent, be good ambassadors of the love and the faith and the grace and the mercy that you have given to us, but not only to us, that we might share it with the whole world. We pray for our family members that do not have salvation, that do not know Jesus Christ. We pray that tomorrow as we gather, that just by showing love and compassion to them and understanding that they will hunger and thirst not for food, but for what we have. For the light that shines inside of us will illuminate the dark places in their life. And they will want to know more about Jesus. Help us to always set the example Help us to always follow and obey your ways, Lord. We pray for our nation. But we've gone so far away from your precepts, Abba Father. Please forgive us as your church that we have not stood up and made our voices heard. Lord, I pray that you endow each and every person here with a supernatural unction, with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your word, that tomorrow the Holy Spirit will just shine through them. That no matter what situation they might find themselves in, they will remember the grace and mercy that you have shown to them, and they will give that grace and mercy to others. Let us not be quick to judge the hearts of others because that's only for you to do. Lord, we love you. Tomorrow as we celebrate a day of thanksgiving with food, love and family, Lord, let us remember to be thankful every day. To never take for granted the clean water that we drink and the food that you supply, the roof over our head and a warm bed to sleep in. Please, Lord, let the Holy Spirit move in us if we have any ounce of ungratefulness. Chaste and correct us, Lord, that we might change our ways and always seek you and be grateful and thankful for all that you have given most of all, we thank you for the cross. We thank you for that blood-stained cross. That every drop of blood of our Savior, our Redeemer, trickled down to your mercy seat. 
has washed us clean. Renew our minds, our hearts. Help us to bridle our mouths, Lord. We so easily disrespect each other, Lord. And then we want your blessings. Remind us that blessings come through obedience. Lord, I thank you for my husband. I always thank you for my husband, Lord. He is also my shepherd, my pastor. He's also quick to correct me, Lord, when I fall short. And I thank him for that, Lord. I ask that you surround him with men, Lord, like Peter and Paul and Luke and John, and to encourage him and strengthen him, lift him up, Lord. I pray that the Holy Spirit will put a ring of fire around him. Protect him no matter where he goes or what he does, Lord. Seal that ring of fire with the blood of Jesus Christ that no evil can touch him. I pray the same for Pastor Ed and Darlene, that you protect them, Heavenly Father. Being shepherds is hard. It's hard, Lord, because our heart breaks when their hearts break. But I ask that you protect them mentally, physically, and spiritually. Protect their hearts, Lord. Protect their minds. Always keep their spiritual eyes open and their ears open that they might hear and see what you need from them, Heavenly Father, and that they will be quick to obey. I seal this prayer, Heavenly Father, with asking for long life and health for each and every person, not only ones that are here, Lord, but the ones that are, are missing today, Heavenly Father, the ones that are ill or they're traveling out of town to be with family, Lord, all of those who are watching via social media, Lord, just pray your blessings upon them, Heavenly Father. Let your righteous, mighty right hand be shown in their lives, Lord, that they might be a great testimony. And Heavenly Father, I pray. I pray for Alicia. She will come up here on Sunday and give her testimony that will glorify you, Heavenly Father. I pray that the Holy Spirit will stir in her mind and her heart and bring to remembrance things that maybe she has forgotten, Lord that you have brought her from darkness into the glorious light, Lord. Quicken her tongue, Heavenly Father, that she might be able to speak with simplicity and clarity, but with boldness and love, Lord, that all will know that the woman that she is now is not the woman that she was, but what happened in between was Jesus Christ. Bless each and every person here, Heavenly Father. We thank you again. Thank you with all of our hearts. Jesus, thank you for the cross. Thank you for taking our place. Thank you for nailing our sin to that cross. Thank you most for resurrecting. That you sit at the right hand of your Father and you intercede for us. Because you know, you know the pain that we go through. You felt it in the flesh, the discouragement, the fear the hunger, the thirst. You felt it. And you can understand us better than anybody else because you see our hearts. So we thank you, Jesus. Above all things, we thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your redeeming love. Thank you for the cross. Abba, Father, thank you for the gift of your son. We bless you. We pray in the precious and powerful and the awesome name of your son, Yeshua. Blessed day, just heard with a blessing to you. Jesus Christ. You know, the word of God comes in and transforms our lives from the inside out. What an amazing opportunity. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. Right now, if you've never given your life to Jesus, I want to give you that opportunity right now, and I would be honored uh, to pray with you right now. If you've never given your life to Jesus, just repeat this prayer with me. And um, believe in with all of your heart. The Bible says that if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that we will be saved. And the Bible also says that everyone that calls out to the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
So right now, do you just repeat this prayer with me? Say, Heavenly Father, I choose to believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that you raised him from the dead to give me a new life. So now, Jesus, I repent of my sin. I turn away from, from my wicked way of living. I turn my heart to you. From this day forward, I want to serve you. And I want to do everything that I can to be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just pray to that prayer right now, I just want to welcome you into the kingdom of God, into his household. If you have a church, I, or you don't have a home church, get plugged into your home church, wherever you may be. If you're in the Albuquerque, New Mexico area, we would love to have you uh, join us for worship here at Majesty Worship Center. Our address is as follows, 3250 Coors Boulevard, Northwest, Suite B, Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87121. We would love to meet you. We would love to, to fellowship with you. So I just pray that you would get plugged into the house of God. God bless you, and thank you for watching.